If you've ever went walking in the morning, you've probably seen something like this before. Rays of light passing through mist or atmosphere. In this tutorial, we're going to be talking about the interaction between the rays of light themselves and the pools of light that are created on the surface that it's being projected onto. This is a method that can be used for full CG environments. Um, you can also mix this method with plates and stuff like that. Uh, but it's great for having uh, a light that's actually occluding shapes that we can see and the light source is kind of moving. So if we have clouds uh, or we have some kind of something passing over, uh, that's what this sweeping light effect is kind of good for. Towards the end of the tutorial, we'll look at how to get some of the particles in there, how to make those cut into the god ray, uh, and how to get multiple layers crossing over each other. Uh, and also some problems that we can run into with screen space god rays. If we start looking at this and we look at the most basic god ray, uh, this would be one possible approach of making a god ray. You kind of create uh, some kind of alpha. We punch a few holes in it and that's what we want to create the god ray through. So we would kind of put it into position and put the god ray node. Uh, and when you have the god ray node, you can move the center around. So we could put it here and we could either scale up. You could also scale down from another direction, but essentially the same thing. We get some rays from that and you can adjust the size with your noise. So you can adjust those ray sizes by reducing the noise size or adding contrast uh, by gamming down. So this, this pattern is kind of uh, helping it. Um, so the same thing here. Uh, it's the same exact idea with the volume raise node, pretty much works the same way, just a little bit different way to control it, but you can put the volume ray node behind and you put the position kind of behind that light source and it'll, it'll do that effect. Now, if we want the god rays to actually interact and create pools of light, this technique is not going to be the way to do it because we need to have an alpha that represents the ground. So the trick with this is to actually flip it. We want to create the interactive mat first. So we want to start with noise. We actually want the noise to be uh, kind of on the ground. So I'm going to show this with a CG environment after. I'm just doing a quick 2D example first. So the noise here, we're just doing a, cor a corner pin and kind of getting it on the ground. And rather than God raying down from a light source, we're actually God raying through these sort of uh, interactive points. So we create the God ray node and we scale uh, up. So I put the center up where the light source would be and I scale basically down, which creates uh, this sort of God ray. And what that allows us to do is, is to have a mat that represents both the God ray, which is this, but also the interactive point. And so if I gamma down this mat here to something that looks like this and we and we merge these together, you can see that each god ray is getting its own pool of light at the bottom. And when we animate this noise, uh, it's going to look like the god rays are actually casting light on those positions. Um, so we have the rays actually matching up. And we could, of course, blur this a little bit if we wanted. And we can control the mats independently. Or we could even, you know, gamma up and have a, a bit more god rays or however you want to do it but fundamentally this is the the idea um, but with a cg environment we can do the same thing with a position pass so we can create a 3d noise with uh, not a 3d noise but a 2.5d noise that runs across the position pass and fundamentally do the same exact trick with a cg environment so that's what we're going to do uh, in just a second here so if we go here and we take a look at the position pass. This is what we need to do to create that noise running across the surface. So to do that, it's actually pretty easy. Uh, we can do a expression. And what we want to do in the expression node, we have the color channels here. Uh, I do have a video on my channel that goes into this, uh, how to like make this a tool if you want, um, a kind of a 2.5D noise that you can uh, kind of tool up and use use again, but in this case we don't actually need to do that All we need to do is go to the last box here, which is the alpha and we want to type noise RGB and With you know commas in between uh, like this and if we look at the resulting alpha of that 
you notice that we have uh, a noise pattern all over the surface. So this is great, uh, but it's not moving, so we can't do anything with that. So we want to put a grade node just before. And in the grade node, you see it breaks. So first thing we want to do is uncheck the black clamp because the position pass has some negative values and stuff like that to make it work. And that's, that's killing it, so we want to turn that off. And what we can do now uh, is pretty interesting. To make this animate, we want to go to the offset. And we can actually just increase this. And you'll notice that the noise will actually flow across the surface. So this is how we can create the base for our interactive effect here. Uh, there will be one problem with doing this is if you offset it and you sample and you look at the alpha that we're creating, the value. Uh, if we go kind of like negative with this, you'll notice that we have some negative values, which is not good with alphas. We want to have zero to one. So after the expression, you'll need to put a clamp so that we have a nice zero to one alpha. Uh, and that's what we have uh, now. So uh, what we can also do is replace the red, green, and blue channels so we can get rid of this position pass. And we want to replace all the channels with this resulting noise pattern that we've created. So we can just put a shuffle node at the end and say we want to put alpha into all the channels like this. So if I hit RGB and A, all the channels look the same, which will work really well for when we put the God Ray effect on top of this. So we have these nodes that's kind of creating it, and we have this node that we were doing the offset. So that's, that's where we can go back and animate it. The other thing we can do here is we can actually go to the gain or the multiply, uh, and we can actually go into the colors, and we can increase the scale uh, if you want to make it you know, bigger in one direction. Um, so we have X, Y, and Z uh, represented here. So you can basically just play around with these and see how, how you like it. Um, same with the offset. That's kind of offsetting it in like all directions sort of, but if you want the, the God Ray to flow in one direction, you can go into the offset and just offset one of the colors. And you see it flows in one direction now. So if you're creating, you know, a cloud uh, passing over, this is actually a really great way to get those light effects all over your environment. Um, so this is a pretty cool effect. Uh, now all we need to do is create the God Ray. So I'll just go here. We have some kind of gray background first. So I'm going to fix that by masking based on the beauty. Uh, I'll just mask that so we don't have that kind of gray. Because I have the alpha here of, of the actual scene, uh, which is like this. This is just like the base, base render. Uh, and now we can mask that and we're good. Now we're ready for the God Ray. So I'll put a God Ray node here and we will put the center up in the corner and close these panels, take a look at that and we'll just decrease the scale a bit. Uh, first thing, you'll need to increase the steps here so we can increase that to a higher number, let's say 10. Uh, you can also hit max, but you know that's not gonna be what we want in this case. Uh, so we can move this up and scale it down and we can move it up further and that's kind of good we can we can gain this up a little bit see how it looks uh, it's a little bit easier to tell once we start looking at a scene though so um, if we take our two mats that we've created this one uh, and this one uh, let's apply it to the actual base beauty of the scene so first I'll take the interactive mat and I'll just kind of gain down everything except the light rays. So I'm gonna take the grade, I'm gonna invert that, so there's a little invert button, and gain down. So now we're getting the spots that are only, um, you know, kind of in the alpha here. Uh, we can also do the opposite, so we could do the same mat, but not invert it, and we could just kind of gain up a little bit so we can we can see what's happening. And so maybe that's too small of, of lights, but we'll see how it looks. Uh, we'll take the, the God Rays and we'll kind of plus this over, or we could do it over. Over would actually be better in this case. We kind of want it to occlude um, and not brighten the highlights necessarily. So over is, over is fine. Uh, and this is kind of what we have. Now this is too bright, so we can bring this down a bit. Uh, and to make this look better, I think we could just make the noise um, much bigger. So now we can start to play with the noise size and see what that looks like. Uh, part of the problem is, yeah, we just need to have big, big pools of light being created to make that a little bit more com com convincing here. Uh, we can also match the color a bit better. So, you know, these are white 
uh, whereas it feels like we have a bit of a warmer thing. Even though the material is warm itself, I think it just looks a bit uh, more natural if, we, if you throw a, bit, a, bit, a tiny bit of color into it. Another thing we can do is in the God Ray setting, there's a uh, from and to color. So you can basically like kind of fade off the, the ends of them a little bit. So it feels like it's not just like completely sort of a linear effect, but rather it's kind of falling off from a source um, and that's gonna help. Um, so let's just see what else can we do here. Yeah, so I'll make the, the spots a little bit bigger. So I'll go back to our little size control that I keep going back and just keep playing with the size um, and just see what we can do here. Let's just play around with the scale. I think it just needs to be something probably like this. Sometimes you get a bit of a harsh fall off um, because of the noise that we used. So you get these sort of harsh edges. Uh, if we look at if we look at the alpha, um, we can actually see that. So what we can do is we can actually blur this alpha a bit as well. So if I go here, blur the alpha, and then I'll just put this back over itself. So we get this kind of like foggy looking effect around it and we can uh, take a look at what that looks like. And you see how it kind of softens the edge a little bit. So we're not getting such harsh edges uh, and it feels a little bit more natural. So that, that allows us to kind of control how, how broad those, those rays go and starts to look a bit more realistic. Now we're going for a pretty contrasty scene. So we're going like for like dark shadows and stuff like that. If we had a fill light, um, you know, we could play it like that too, where we don't completely uh, gain to zero here. We could have some fill uh, if we want. So we could just kind of bring it up a tiny bit. Uh, but I kind of like the contrasty look. It, it gives it that really dramatic uh, sort of spotlight effect. Um, and that's kind of it. That's kind of how we can get the effect. And you just play with the noise. And you could do more than one noise pattern. So we have like the big broad one that we've done now. Um, and we can animate that sweeping through. So we can just play with our offset. And that's just going to feel like uh, that those rays are going through. So. Uh, if we if we were to keyframe that over time, uh, that's what that's going to look like. So you could do like a helicopter or something. You could do some really crazy stuff this way. Um, and even if it was just one singular alpha with a P mat, you could do the same same idea here. Um, so I think that's pretty much it for this effect. I'll go into the comp now to show um, how I did just some of the the particle effects. Um, be mixed in there, but fundamentally it's just this and then playing around a lot with like the look and the timing just to really dial it in You know, maybe you could make your fall off look nicer uh, You could you know once you break up the rays as well. It helps a lot. So we're gonna talk about that, but um, fundamentally the main techniques are Not that complicated. It's always just about dialing everything in which means the motion how much of it on certain parts of the sequence, like if you're starting your shot versus your end, um, what are you trying to tell here? Uh, the other thing I guess that I could mention is, let's go here to my actual comp. So this is the one that I did, uh, and we can just step through. So I created the alpha here, and then I basically just God ray it from that, um, and then we kind of put it over. But I did also do a negative God Ray from our object that's passing through. Uh, and basically, just, you're just taking the alpha of this thing and doing a God Ray from that alpha. So if we have uh, the alpha of the triangle and we're doing a God Ray, we can create uh, something like that. And we can also uh, roto it on certain parts to just make it a little bit sharper if we need to. And kind of cut into the God Ray to make it look like the object is passing through. And... When you're doing that, you can basically the amount that you stencil it will make it look like it's further inside, or rather the the god ray is closer to the camera uh, and not blocking the object. So if I put it at zero, it looks like this object is sitting behind the god ray uh, versus one where it feels like it's cutting it out. And you can always play with it somewhere in the middle too, especially if it's passing through. This is something you'd probably want to animate. So that's something to keep in mind. So we'll talk about the, the particles uh, next. So for the dust element, um, you know, I have a whole bunch of dust elements here that I kind of brought in, 
but essentially without the dust element we have something that's just like the god ray and then when you start to bring it in um it just gets gives a bit of texture to that light which is really um pretty awesome not now not always is that the case because it depends on the particle size in the air you know if you have a big cloud um, or like steam over a lake or something like that the the noise is going to be bigger or if you have fine particles of dust in the air maybe it's a garage they're going to be smaller so it's not always just um, you know random particles in the air you got to think about the size of the particles or the the kind of volume you're shining light through uh, so that's kind of what we have here. We have some finer dust that's blowing around and basically, yeah, it's just a clip of, you know, some dust here. And the trick here is to, uh, take the alpha or, or not the alpha, the RGB and alpha, if you want, uh, and multiply it against that image. So if I have that disabled, you see, I kind of graded it just a bit brown and then I'm just multiplying uh, a pre-comp of the, the god rays that I did up in the top of the composite. So it just kind of helps cut it out, makes it feel like that's hit, the light is hitting all those particles on that, on that layer. And it starts to become more convincing the more layers you add. So, um, you know, I added like a whole bunch of different layers here. Um, some at different depths. You notice we were uh, out of focus in the foreground, so I added some particles just in the foreground that pass over everything just to give some sense of scale and distance. Um, so those are things you want to think about. And we'll just step down all the way here. And then there's some lens flare stuff going on that I might do another tutorial on some of the lens flare stuff. But that's kind of the gist of it. Um, I did do a bit of a sharpening like crazy on this just because it's going on YouTube and Vimeo and compression kills really sm small particles uh, so it's almost like invisible so I kind of sharpened it like almost too much uh, on purpose um, but yeah that's that's kind of the effect and this is the overall look that you can get um, again you know you can go further with this uh, if this is like feature film and you needed some god rays you know for example like something you could do even more uh, you have like the sh shadow cutting out. You could put an, another god right behind and just so you see some shapes in that cutout or just some stuff going on in the background subtly or even some very foreground subtle god rays coming over the camera. You could flare up this corner and have, have some subtle uh, hazing coming from off screen. So there's all kinds of more things you can do depending on the amount of time you want to spend on things. So, you know, I'm not going to spend infinite time on this, but I think this is a pretty cool result and hopefully that was useful for somebody. So if you guys liked it, hit the like button or subscribe if you're not already. And that's about it.